I'm at the Dory Alley Street Fair, and um, for those of you who don't know, it's a, it's a major BDSM um, festival in San Francisco. Probably the more famous one is the Folsom Street Fair, but the, uh, the Dory Alley Fair is, um, is more um, the gay male community, where the Folsom Street Fair is probably it's more a mixed, it's more a mixed crowd. I came to San Francisco when I was 19 years old, and uh, I didn't go. I, I'd heard of Folsom and I'd heard of Dory, uh, but I mean, it was. I mean, from what I'd seen and what I'd heard, I mean, it just it just sounded scary and, and freaky, and I, I did not want to go. Um, you know, I was very content with just you know having uh, you know just one male lover, and you know that was it, and uh, that was fine for me. Uh, you know, later it just, you know, later I had a, I had a change of mind. I first went to the Dory Alley Fair probably when I was in my early 20s. Um, I went with some friends and I, I, I just kind of went sort of just as a joke or curiosity because I felt like, you know, this was very much the margins of the gay community and uh, I just came down here I guess to ogle but as soon as I got here it became very easy to join in and just take part in, in everything and um, but I was very still smug about it and I was like you know this is not the LGBT community this is not the gay community this is like a, a like a sick subsect of it, and uh, I disregarded it. And you know, I didn't go back for a few years, but I found, let's say, mainstream gay life more and more unfulfilling and just empty and shallow. And everything that I wanted from it, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't getting. So. I just, I went back saying, well, maybe when something is more extreme, you know, the results will be even more extreme. And the thing is, it's, it's a lie because you, you end up empty and shallow and disappointed, but it's more extreme. It's, it's even worse. I mean, the promise is bigger, but the letdown is bigger too. So I see a lot of sadness here and you know covered over with sort of a mask of uh, sexual freedom but at the same time everyone is being bound and chained and gagged. So it's it's sexual freedom that has ended up in, in, bon in bondage. And a a lot of people would think that here, where you have, you know, the BDSM culture on full display, that, you know, God is not here, there's no hope here, there's no salvation here, but when things are the darkest, I mean, in reality, um, things were very, very sick, uh, and the Lord took pity on me to save me. I mean, things were at their worst. So it, it doesn't matter where you are or what you are doing, just say yes. Because when I, when our Lord Jesus Christ gave me another chance, I was covered in urine and excrement in blood and spit and semen and I was really with the pigs I mean literally like the prodigal son and it's it was at that moment that our Lord it was that it was it I know Jesus knew I was a difficult case that I was stubborn and that I wasn't going 
to say yes. I wasn't going to submit to him easily. So when I was at my worst, when I was at my most desperate, desperate, that is when, that is when Jesus gave me another chance and no one at that time was willing to do that. No one. I mean, my family always prayed for me, but they couldn't, you know, they couldn't go with me. They couldn't accompany me to where, you know, to where I wanted to go. So, but Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ could follow me no matter where, no matter the, the hellhole and the pigsty and the filth that I covered myself, he was still there. He could go with me. And when when I was most sort of overcome with just absolute desolation, that's when I had really no other choice. And our Lord Jesus Christ was there and I said I said, yes, I, I don't I don't want to live this way, but more 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 specifically, I said I don't want to die this way. God is always with you, waiting, waiting like the father of the prodigal son, waiting for you to appear on the horizon, waiting for 